Hi, this is Josh, pharmacist with PharmacistTips.com, here to talk about diclofenac sodium. We're going to talk about the tablets as well as the gel. Of course, we'll discuss the uses, dosage, as well as the side effects of diclofenac. Uh, remember, not medical advice. This is for informational purposes only. Okay, so diclofenac tablets. What are they? They're a pain medication or an analgesic. They're in the family of medicines known as NSAIDs, or the non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs. Common drugs in that class include ibuprofen, naproxen, and uh, the di diclofenac tablets are sold under the brand name Cataflam, Cambia, Zipsor, Zorvalex. However, it's a, the generic is widely available, and that's typically what most people will use. It's indicated or used for arthritis pain, migraine pain, just pain in general. Uh, dysmenorrhea, alkalosing, spondylitis, and it's used uh, off-label for gout flares, the inflammation and pain associated with a gout flare. What is the common dosage? It's available in immediate release, delayed release, as well as extended release tablets, so that's going to affect the dosage, and your healthcare provider can help determine the appropriate dosage. In the U.S., it is Rx only. I believe in many parts of the world, however, you can buy this over the counter at the pharmacy. Immediate release dose, uh, 50 milligrams, two to four times a day, depending on the severity of the pain. The delayed release, uh, 25 milligrams, two to four times a day, or 75 milligrams twice a day. And extend release, often just 100 milligrams, one time per day. It is recommended you take the immediate release with food that can uh, offset some of the potential for stomach upset. However, uh, the food with delayed release capsules is generally not recommended as that may reduce the effectiveness of the medication. So some of the warnings, these are gonna be the same warnings you're gonna see with any NSAID. All the NSAIDs have this risk. It's a, you should never use an NSAID after coronary artery bypass graft surgery. It just uh, puts you at high risk of having further cardiac issues. It, they can all cause GI inflammation, increase the risk of uh, bleeding, ulcers, things like that. May worsen existing kidney problems and all NSAIDs may increase blood pressure. I've seen this happen many times. It will resolve once the NSAID is stopped in general. And sometimes it can cause liver issues. All these things, if you're on this medication long-term, your doctor will monitor for those side effects. Obviously, the blood pressure or increase in fluid, you may notice swelling in the hands and feet. That would be something you'd want to speak to your healthcare provider about right away. Uh, so side effects, uh, most common, swelling and fluid retention, just as I was uh, talking about. That can lead to an increase in blood pressure. Um, again, it generally resolves fairly quickly after stopping the medication. Other side effects can include dizziness, itch, rash, nausea, and stomach upset. Uh, it can increase the risk of urinary tract infections, and ringing in the ears can occur. So some key points to remember with the tablets, we always want to use the lowest effective dose for the shortest duration possible. Obviously, if you're using this to treat um, chronic pain, such as arthritis pain, you will have to use it for a longer duration. That's why one has to be mindful of the side effects. You watch, uh, watch for those. Your doctor monitors for those through labs, and you just, um, if, if side effects come up, then you may have to lower the dose or change your therapy. Okay, so let's talk about diclofenac in the gel form, the topical application of this medication. So it's, of course, it's still the NSAID, but it's used topically in the U.S., uh, sold under the brand name Volterin, and there are many store brand or generics available in the pharmacies today, as it is now over-the-counter, as well as still available as a prescription. However, most insurance companies no longer cover the medicine since you can purchase it over-the-counter. Indications, it's for arthritis pain in the hand, wrist, elbow, foot, and ankles. Um, the RX, I believe, is for the knee joints as well. So the dosage, you're going to get this little card included with your gel, and it has the, if you're treating a portion of the upper body, you squeeze out enough gel to cover this portion of the card, and then the lower body, you can do a 4.5 inch strip of the gel. So this is a plastic card, it's washable, it's just to help you get the appropriate dose. You can put the dose, squeeze the gel on the card, and then apply it directly to the joint. 
Remember, it's indicated for arthritis pain. It's used four times a day. It does take up to seven days, so it's something you need to use consistently to experience results. And it's for use uh, on no more than two body areas. And for more than 21 days, you need to speak to your doctor. So again, we'll just touch on some of those high points. Over the counter, it's just no more than two body parts. The, and if you're using it more than three weeks, speak to your healthcare provider. Just make sure that it is arthritis pain that that does seem to be the best of treatment for you. Of course, we want to rub bit the gel right into the skin of the painful area. We want to wash our hands after applying, unless, of course, your hands are the affected area. Then you should wait one hour to wash them. And again, it may take seven days for that full effect to be noticed. Some warnings with the gel. We're going to have the standard NSAID warnings, the standard non steroidal anti inflammatory drugs. You're going to have all these warnings of cardiac risk, uh, you know, not for use after heart surgery. You can get the stomach upset, may worsen kidney problems, may increase blood pressure. However, when you use topically, this, these risks are very, very low, much lower than compared to the tablets because you get very little into the body, into systemic circulation. However, those risks are still there, but much, much lower than the tablet. Um, some of the most common side effects we do see with gel, however, is rash, itchiness, and scaling or dry skin uh, right where you're applying the gel. Less common, we can, it's still listed in the literature, but much lower than the tablets. Increase in blood pressure, chest pain. We can also see some sun sensitivity at the application site, stomach pain, uh, headache, and liver problems. Uh, so a few key points to remember with the gel. Uh, it has lower risk of side effects versus the tablets. We always want to follow the package instructions, obviously, and speak to your health care provider if you're using it longer than three weeks. do appreciate you watching. I'd really appreciate it if you'd like this video and subscribe to my channel.